I want to go now um, to Ed Foster because this has become a focal point around the country. Quartzsite, uh, Arizona, he is the mayor there. It's become a focal point because of the police chief and others uh, declaring a civil emergency uh, because, uh, Sunday because people are upset about the woman, um, Jennifer Jones, being arrested for simply asking um, questions during her citizens' communication and the mayor saying, let her speak. And then this example of tyranny is drawn. Campaign for Liberty, uh, the... Um, Oath Keepers and everybody to court side, so we're watching this closely. Uh, Mayor, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Alex. Uh, you know, it's uh, your show and your audience that really have carried the ball in this thing. Uh, it, it's made it an international story, and that international support has been overwhelming right now. Well, sir, uh, let's absolutely, uh, this has become an international issue. This is just out of the Arizona Republic and Associated Press. Arizona town in disarray, mayor alleges corruption. You, of course, uh, are elected uh, there, sir. And uh, so I guess this is martial law. Uh, is it true that you have now been fired uh, by these people? Well, effectively, I'll tell you what, once you declare a state of emergency, the chief executive the highest elected official is the one that's supposed to be in charge. But this council has had an illegal meeting Sunday in which the attorney general has finally got so many emails and letters and complaints. And he uh, sent out an email yesterday to everyone that he hadn't received a formal complaint about an illegal meeting. So I rushed out. We had no power. I rushed over to California yesterday afternoon, and I made sure he got at least one formal complaint signed by the mayor of Quartzsite about their illegal meeting. And the interesting part of that is, during an illegal meeting, any action taken is null and void because all business at an illegal meeting is therefore illegal. So we are technically not under a state of emergency, even though the chief of police and the town manager think they are. No, no, I understand. I mean, I mean, how do they fire the mayor? Uh, how do they send a SWAT team to your house Sunday demanding you come to a meeting and you get there and say this is illegal, this meeting, well, uh, and, they, and they slam my house. They came to my door and they said, you are required to be at town hall. And I, I said, wait a minute, you know, my relationship with this chief, and he, he, had, not, he had a vest on that said police, you know, not, uh, not as, whatever they call that. I don't think it's right here, but it is you know, I'm on, I, Nassau, and they were dressed up for war. But, sir, to be right, specific, right. so so they've declared the civil emergency. Folks were able to hear it uh, through the right. window. Uh, we, uh, we've now got a copy of it. Uh, basically, it is martial law. And uh, now... Well, they, again, they think they have. And this morning here, in a few minutes, there's going to be a, 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 a illegal meeting, or at least they think there is. They have called, changed the schedule of the meeting from 7 p.m. this evening to morning because they didn't think anybody would be here and already the crowds are starting to gather for the meeting. But basically when this meeting is happens at 10 o'clock from the podium, I am going to announce that this is the result of an illegal act during the illegal meeting they had Sunday. This I will not compound the illegality of it. I'm canceling this meeting. I will re have them reschedule it in a facility. Well, sir, I feel like I'm town. in the twilight zone. This is the Associated Press. Thousands are traveling to your town. I'm told hundreds and hundreds have already traveled there. Uh, it says the far western Arizona town of Quartzsite was in disarray after the town council ousted the mayor, you're elected, <laughs> from power and declared a state of emergency uh, well, all I'm over. I'm asserting my power this morning, Art. This is going to, this is going to be a three-ring circus here this morning. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. So you're going to go have a showdown literally at high noon Arizona time and say, look, you may claim that the elected mayor isn't the mayor. You may claim because you got guns. You know, this happened famously in Tennessee in a case uh, where... Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to do this in 10 o'clock here in about 45 minutes. We're going to do, do this. And uh, even if two people were in the office, this whole schedule of a meeting at 10 a.m. in the morning in an attempt do this when the citizens of Quartzsite are busy with their lives and can't come to this meeting. And that's why they did it. Also, the chief has went to, I'm looking around me now, and the sheriff and all kinds of outside police forces are here on the scene. He wants to make this look. So, and he is the one that's inciting. And if you look at the videos of our meeting, when he arrested uh, Mike Ross and when he arrested Jones, he was inciting the people, you know? 
He well, Mayor, the this is what's key, sir. The sir. Causing the problem, you know? Sir, we're going to skip this break because we only have a few more minutes with you, this network break, because it's so important. And obviously, I, I, I feel like I've just fallen into the twilight zone here. You're the elected mayor. They're arresting people that try to speak politely during citizens' communications. Uh, they, uh, they've declared an emergency. They say they fired you. So literally, they're now becoming kings. And, and from what I just oh. heard you say... The, the local, uh, the, the, the sheriff, it, it sounds like, is teaming up with the police chief. Well, and actually I, I, I don't want to go there because there's, I, I, you know, the 80% the majority of the police force that actually really just well this up, uh, they are really good officers. They are oath, they're oath keepers. No, 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 no. I know that 80% of the cops support you there, and that's good. But, 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 Mayor, what I'm saying is from what you said, he, he's declared the emergency, so now the mayor's gone. He's, he's saying, I'm boss, I'm king, I'm God. That's the nature of tyranny. But, but, but expanding, that, that you're is, saying... We're not going to let him get by with No, it. I know, but that's you're saying he's happen, got... He's, he's called in other police, I, I guess, yeah. behaving like you're the bad guys is my point. That's right. He's okay, Mayor, to, Mayor, Mayor, you've got the floor. His existence with the show of force that, oh, we're, we're in a siege mentality. And the only reason they're in that is because so many thousands of people out there who heard your show and all the other shows out there have written in, sent them emails, you know, and, and I've really gotten copied most of them, and I really have never seen a threat. I mean, they're really telling it like it is, you know, you're, you're, not respecting free speech. What are you doing in courtside? Blah blah blah, and that. There, I have not seen any kind of letter that really comes down as a threat. But these people are. It, they don't want people asking them what they're doing. They don't want to be doing their business in front of the public. That's why they, when they had that meeting Sunday, they locked the door. They didn't want the, anybody to see that happen. Mayor, they let me just wrong. ask one question, and then I want to give you the floor for the next five, six minutes till we go to break so you can lay out from beginning to end what has happened and where you're going from this point. But see how good people under tyranny even try to argue that, hey, we're not bad people. Obviously, we aren't. Now, if a police chief ever gets some emails criticizing, uh, arresting people for free speech, now they get to fire the mayor. I mean, if I sent an email to Austin Police Chief Arde Saveda and said, I think you're a federal thug for taking federal money to take blood at warrantless checkpoints, would he then fire the mayor, shut down the city council, call in outside police and declare himself emperor. I mean, let's look at the mind game, the delusion of tyranny that tyrants give us. This is asinine. This is naked, brazen, out of control, ridiculousness. In court sight, you are the mayor. They have told the AP and the news is announcing the, uh, well, I guess the cops say the mayor's fired. Uh, so he is. So, so, so now I guess if the police and the city council say that our our mayor's fired. He is. I mean, why even have a city council? So I'm going to stop right there. Sir, tell us what's happened from beginning to end, the people that are massing there, what's happening, the showdown that's coming. You've got the floor. Okay. First off, it's always about money. When I got involved in politics in Courtside, I'm an engineer, and they were spending 250 to half a million dollars every month on engineering. And I look around our quiet little community out here, I saw little big projects going on but the money kept going out. I got involved because I was concerned. And it, it's always about the money. When I got elected, I thought I could go in the back room and look at the books, but that don't happen because they shut me down. They took away the authority of the mayor right from the beginning, even before I was sworn into office. As soon as I was elected, the former mayor passed ordinances to depriving the mayor of authority. And every time I've used any authority of the mayor, they take it away immediately. I, I asked the town manager for a report. The next council meeting, the council passed an ordinance that says elected officials can't ask for reports unless the whole council approves. You know, so, I mean, they shut me down, shut me down, shut me down. But I kept after them. I used the FOIA documents, and I finally figured out that there's eight to ten extra paychecks going out every payday. Every two weeks, eight to ten checks, thousand dollars each. We're talking about a quarter of a million dollars out of a three million dollar budget. Pretty significant hunk. I went to the state tried to get the, uh, get the state to do it. The state actually opened an investigation, but it moved slowly. 
And that's why they're acting so scared, and that's why they're so dangerous, because they exactly know... Right. Yeah. They're trapped, they're cornered, and their reaction is to, to not to say, oh, my God, maybe we better get out Their Their action is to try to seize more power and more power. And they actually contrived, if you look at the videos, the chief instituted himself into the business of the council, he incited the audience, and created the situation where Mr. Roth was arrested the meeting before, Miss Jones was arrested at the next meeting. You know, he's, he's trying to institute this emergency procedure so that he can seize control of the town. He's running a so PSYOP. He, that's what corrupt cops do when they come up and shove you doing. and say, why are you upset? Why are you upset? And I've learned to just look down and just, just stop talking, and they get really well, mad. But, yeah, they try to start a fight with you. One night at the Castle Podium, he got up, and he called me arrogant because I just sat at the podium and smiled at him. And I'm trying to get the people out there in, this, in La Paz County and Port Sight to do the same. Don't let him incite you, because if he incites you, he's playing victim to his plan. You know, if you just smile at him, you take all of his powers away. You know, he has no power. And, and truthfully, in the end, he, we have to win. You know, we are going to win. The state is finally, thanks to all your listeners and all the people, the state is waking up to this, you know? Well, I mean, I mean, who needs mayors or anybody anymore? I guess once you put a police chief in, we'll just... Why not build a throne in the city building and put... I'm serious, and declare him emperor of Quartzsite? Well, what, what, what we do need, and I'll tell you what, what you're... What I am... You know, I've, I have used your listeners and the people that are calling. I've asked them to contact the governor and the attorney general, and that has had an effect, Okay. But the other effect of this has been, I've literally received thousands of emails and hundreds of calls a day, and it's amazing how much the story is similar all over the country. My brother started this down in Okaloosa County, Florida, and if you look up Okaloosa County and, and Sheriff, uh, I think it was Sheriff Joe, uh, not Joe, uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie something down there. My brother got him uh, arrested, the under sheriff arrested, a couple of county board supervisors arrested, and... You know, I'm sort of following his template. The other day, I I'd spoken about that, and a lady from Florida called me, and she wanted to contact my brother. And, and she did. I gave her my brother's number, and she contacted me. The 60-year-old lady was attending council meeting, taking notes. She probably didn't know that she could go and get a FOIA document and get the meet, meeting minutes. But she was taking notes. A council member got up and went to her and shook his finger in her face and said, you're a bad person. I mean, imagine that in America. You... These yeah, they got they got something to hide. Look, here's the deal, and you know this, Mayor. We the people constitute states. The legislatures institute the laws, and when cities and counties don't follow it, uh, and and if the sheriff won't enforce the law, it's time for the state police to roll in, and it's time for that city council to be clamped down and everything to be opened up. And that's what's okay. supposed to happen here. You've definitely got rogue government there, and it's time for the state to step up. If the state doesn't step up, then you've got a very dangerous precedent right there uh, in Arizona. Exactly. Before I go away from me, because i got to get to this meeting. Yes, sir. I want, I want to make sure that you understand that when these 80% of the police force uh, decided that they were uh, had enough and they were going to stand up for rights and, and Really, they wrote this letter. It's out there all over the Internet for all of these people, you know. Uh, I went to the governor's office. I'm an engineer, and I'm, I'm a fairly new politician here. And I went to the governor's office, and I told him, I don't know. What's, what do I do here? What? How can you help? Is there something you can do with uh, all of this mess that's going on? I got told there was nothing they could do. The attorney general could do nothing. But again... The publicity, the emails and the letters that have been directed to those two offices, they've changed their attitude now. Again, they don't... Sir, let me stop people. because we're almost out of time, and I want to check in with you towards the end of the show after the meeting, and we're going to check in with Stuart Rhodes and others that are there. But please, sir, in the last minute, what is the showdown? You're going to show up and say, I'm the elected mayor under state law, this is illegal, and what do you think? Well, first off, the, the declaration of an emergency was done at an illegal meeting, therefore it's illegal, null and void, okay? That can't happen. But this meeting that is scheduled at a time and place that wasn't on the on the uh, town uh, code, it's illegal. And we're not going to have this meeting this morning. And that's the showdown. I'm telling them this is an illegal meeting. We cannot have it. We're closing down the meeting right now. 
I'm walking away. If they decide to go ahead, then they will get a, a, a another complaint to the Attorney General's office immediately. I will call the Attorney General with this complaint. Well, also, you should try to We're enter... Not, I'm not going to let them take over the town and, and violate even the town rule. You know, they're, they're in violation of state law. They're in violation of federal civil yeah. rights laws. But they're not going to... Mayor Ed Foster, violated. thank you so much. Obviously, we've been covering court site. This is a big deal where the police chief and the city council, quote, fire the mayor because they got a few thousand emails and people saying, hey, you shouldn't arrest folks in citizen communications uh, who get up there and talk about new taxes being passed illegally. I mean, that's part of what America is. And all over the country, people have gotten to the point where they just drive by government buildings and, ooh, that's the government. And you call them sir and you bow to them. They're the new royalty. No, America is about the people at the city council meetings, the people knowing what's going on with the zoning boards. This is our country, and, and, and government, our servants, have gotten out of control. And all over the nation, they're coming in in Michigan and Oklahoma and saying, you can't grow vegetables without a license in your yard. So a lady's facing 90 days in jail, uh, even though the code says she can grow vegetables. And, and, and if the code said she couldn't, get rid of it. But the code doesn't even say it. That's NBC News admits that. They don't care. It's about their petty power trips. See, control freaks, folks that can't produce, tend to get into government positions because that's where they can have power. It's called parasitism, parasitic behavior. And, and, and when you have servants in government, you have a good society. When you get a bunch of control freaks in there, and when you get the attitude of, well, that's just what they do, and, and, and now all over the country, if you speak out against corruption, they go, oh, my gosh, Al-Qaeda, extremists, call the police, fire the mayor, declare emergency. Nobody can ever speak again at city council meetings. This is what the New World Order is. This is what the fake terror scare is. What did that police chief in court site do last year? They were getting up saying, you're passing taxes. Where are these hundreds of thousands of dollars going? Who gets these mystery paychecks? And they said, we're not going to tell you. You're like Jared Lee Loeffner. Uh, I guess it was earlier this year, shut up, uh, yeah, January. We're not going to discuss it. I mean, this is all on record. And see, it's become a real soap opera. People aren't watching Dancing with the Stars or football or basketball or baseball. People are doing what Americans always did before in other free societies. The real soap opera is reality. The real fight is knowing the personalities, being involved, not letting people run over you, walking tall. You've got to fight for freedom. And that doesn't mean killing some brown people overseas for their opium or their oil or for no-bid weapons contracts. That means here in America, if you just drive by the government buildings and decide that, well, that's their place and they're the boss, of course they're going to run wild. Of course they're going to engage in all sorts of corruption. That's the nature of it. So later... Uh, I want to get into uh, what, what, in fact, you heard the mayor mention his brother uh, exposing corruption and uh, how it ended up sending the sheriff to prison. Um, I mean, this is incredible. So again, you've got it genetic. It's in the family with that mayor. His brother right there in Arizona kicked off an investigation in another county that sent somebody to jail, that sent a whole bunch of people to jail. Listen, if you just threw food all over the ground in your house for a few months, if you didn't have roaches, you're going to get them. If you didn't have rats, you're going to get them. Well, imagine, this is like a kitchen that's had the light off for 20 years with 100 pounds of food dumped in through the ceiling. That's our tax money. And you open up that room, it's nothing but millions of cockroaches and rats running around everywhere. You kick the door in almost anywhere, and you are going to see horrors going on behind the closed doors of national security and local government and all the rest of this. And uh, I go back to the Battle of Athens in 1946, the Battle of Athens sometimes called the McMinn County War. And all these World War II vets got back from World War II and uh, a totally corrupt city council and sheriff's department uh, and police department had taken over and were robbing everybody and were openly mafia. And, and the World War II vets just uh, voted them out in an election. They wouldn't leave, just like what's happening in court site. And so the uh, troops just went in, just the citizens just like 1776 just went in. They had a big shootout with them. They finally waved the white flag. 
And uh, the state came in and found that it was just what the citizens had done. It was a citizen's rebellion against tyranny. And you're going to see this happen. That's why the state of Arizona just says, let that city do whatever they want. Because if you let one ant stand up, all the ants might stand up to the grasshoppers. Because this is going on everywhere. They're jacking up taxes everywhere. They're taking the money everywhere. They're telling you you can't see the records everywhere. They're engaged in all sorts of chicanery everywhere. I mean, our own city council has got their wives and kids hired, and uh, you know they got deals with developers, and it's just it's it's it's, it's, it's we've just accepted that this is what they do, that they lie, steal, cheat, that that's what government does. They've just accepted it. They've they they think they've steamrollered us to where we'll go along with anything. Uh, here's a modern example in Tennessee. Great folks there with the history of standing up. Uh, this is uh, going on in uh, the town of Laverne, and uh, it's uh, in the uh, larger county. Tennessee citizens try to abolish their city government. Citizens in the local town in Tennessee trying to abolish their city government. This is one of the most encouraging stories of free individuals pushing back against tyrannical encroachment since the McMinn County War of 1946. Government in La, V-E-R-G-N-E, I guess that's La, Verge, Tennessee, recently raised property taxes on their citizens by 100% as the economy implodes. That's surfed them, folks. Raising their water utility rate by 40 and also raised their sewage rate by 60. It, it, is it any wonder that the residents want to do away with them? Here's the full story of the people's recent struggle against oppressive taxation that is taking place right next door to you. And it, and it goes on. I mean, this is what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's going on all over the country. Uh, Okaloosa County Sheriff arrested on federal charges uh, in Arizona. All of this uh, triggered uh, by the mayor's brother down there fighting. The, the mayor. Oh, oh, this is in Florida. Okay, okay so I have another one here uh, out of Arizona. There's just too many of these for me to keep track of. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Rob Dew's running these articles uh, uh, into me one after the other. Okay, now. Uh, we, we've got the whole Ron Paul uh, situation uh, that I'm going to be getting into more. Uh, Euro shaken by debt crisis. Uh, we've got Ahmed Wally Karzai, the admitted uh, CIA drug kingpin, uh, the guy that uh, muscles and controls most of the opium in Afghanistan. He has been killed. He's the guy that U.S. troops deliver the schmack to before it's shipped into Russia, China, Eastern, Western Europe, and, of course, the United States directly to, you, to your veins. Uh, and so that's a big deal. Uh, that's in the Washington Post. Again, the New York Times admits he's, he's the top heroin dealer. Does a good job for the Pentagon. But uh, he is dead now. And who knows what happened with that? Was it some rival Rival folks. I mean, that's what these wars are about. That's what's happening uh, right now in Mexico. That's what Fast and Furious is all about. Arming the Los Zetas trained publicly at Fort Benning, Georgia School of Americas in the last decade, launching their attack six years ago. We told you about the new war coming, that they would, quote, have a fake defection uh, into their own drug gang. Uh, they leave Fort Benning, Georgia, get to Mexico, and then defect, and then wage war against the drug cartels that aren't playing ball with the big U.S. banks and the Mexican government of Felipe Calderon. And now that's coming out in federal court in Chicago. That's coming out in federal courts in Mexico that Los Zetas didn't just get the guns shipped out of the U.S. from the ATF. It was directly delivered to them by the DEA, FBI, and ATF, of course. And uh, they're given... Rockets, hand grenades, RPGs, and of course that's all blamed then on gun shows as well. And we've seen now in the last two years uh, Attorney General Eric Holder spending his time demonizing uh, the Second Amendment uh, nonstop, saying we've got to restrict the Second Amendment because of Mexico. And I told you the whole time that they were shipping the guns in. And now you know it's all admitted correct as usual. When you realize that absolute evil runs the government at the top, and then naive, compartmentalized uh, people uh, fill in the gaps at the lower level. They put inept, dumb, gullible order followers at the bottom. The mid-level, a little more sociopathic, controlling, get a bigger piece of the uh, stolen loot. The next crust level, high level, uh, but still compartmentalized criminals. And then at the top... You've got the wheelers and dealers uh, in your regional area who then go and attend criminal roundtable groups uh, operating in 
government slash corporate slash academic roundtables, and then you have the, the national roundtables uh, that coordinate those that then sit inside the larger global roundtables known as Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, and other organizations. And this is how they use a mafia capo system to run this whole thing because the British Empire and mainline history uh, is basically a model of the Venetian black nobility system that was then exported uh, into England about 550 years ago. They had more of a feudal system before that, and they brought in this, uh, this uh, mafia behind the scenes corruption mode that Machiavelli uh, wrote about, so the term Machiavellian. They, they wrote the handbooks on how to do all of this, and Delta Force has taught Machiavelli, and uh, our military at the highest levels has taught how to be Machiavellian. And uh, if you don't agree with Machiavelli, then you do not get promoted to the management levels. That's on record. They, they, they give them Machiavelli, uh, his, his, two, his two books, and then they have to write reports on it. And if you say that I don't believe the end justifies the means and we're going to be evil for a greater good at the end of the day, then you're put in resupply or uh, you're put uh, you know, in, 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 in training uh, you know, for the repelling out of helicopters. But if you agree, well, then they send you to first kill a communist. Seems reasonable. Feels good. And then next, you uh, you blow up somebody who was exposing corruption in their car. And then next, you go to somebody's house and you make it look like a murder-suicide where dad kills the family and you kill mama and you kill the kids. Oh, after that happens, the millions start pumping right into your account. I mean, this is wonderful. And then you're just you're led into the society of psychopathic killers. And uh, you can just walk around laughing at the sheep all around you that have no idea how anything runs. Uh, and uh, their blindness to corruption is just an ether in which you swim. You're like a fish swimming in a sea of blood. And uh, you just you frolic around happily in the sea of blood and pain and corruption and destruction. And, you're, and, and, and the system spreads because the globalists can't prosecute the high-level corrupt people or the mid-level or the low-level because it sets a precedent. Uh, and so corruption is then tolerated and then accepted and then institutionalized and then hell is released. The dam breaks, pure corruption flows, and the dam is now breaking. And people are finally going, my gosh, Alex Jones is right. Let's try to fix it. Let's stop it. Let's, 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 let, let's tackle it. And government is going crazy, going, you don't talk about our corruption or you're with Al-Qaeda. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am on total overload today. I didn't get any sleep last night, but I'm starting to catch my rhythm here. I'm starting to feel my oats. I, I, uh, listen, we got some really big news on the economy. I want to cover that first. Then I'm getting into Operation Fast and Furious, the latest mega developments off the charts. We can, we've got a good chance, a, a, a soft spot on the dragon's they belly. openly set up Homeland Security in their own training manuals and in the public architecture of it to suppress local towns and cities when we go into a total collapse depression that anyone who doesn't want their land taken, who doesn't want to be put into work brigades, will be arrested as a terrorist. That's what happens in a takeover like this. It's happened in countless other countries. You go look at the training manuals we've been sent, published, it's made national news. It's all, I've been to Marine Corps drills where they practice taking on farmers that won't give up their land saying, I'm an American. And they practice mowing them down with 50 cows. And Marines can call in and tell you that. They have been training for at least 15 years, ROTC, all over the United States to quote, take on militias and conservatives and libertarians. I've shown you the New York Times. Uh, with the Explorer Scouts, people laughed four years ago, oh, they're 14. I said, in four years, they'll be 18. Uh, training to, quote, take on disgruntled veterans in Arizona who wouldn't turn their guns in. And the kids go in and train like little attack dogs to kill Johnny when he comes marching home. Because that's who they're worried about, folks. They know that once the military finds out they've been betrayed, once police finally wake up, They've got to have enough corrupt police and people to purge them. And by the way, you're going to be the first people that are targeted. If you're in really corrupt towns and you're a good cop, when this stuff does go into Flashpoint, uh, the establishment will tell you, hey, come out here in the, in the loading area. I need to talk to you. And they're just going to, boom, right in the back of the head with a silencer, throw you in the back of a truck, go dump you. They'll just be killing all over the place because they got handbooks on this. They know exactly what they're doing. And, 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 and this is a hardcore criminal wrecking crew. Just look at Mexico. You think I'm, look at how they pulled the trigger on shipping the guns in and starting the drug war between cartels. 30,000 dead and the biggest percentage of them, the biggest minority of those is cops. 
And they're planning all this in America. They're telling you, oh, we got to give our rights up or Al-Qaeda will get us. <sighs> I'm going to get into Fast and Furious and the biggest development yet in a moment. But first, I, I talked a lot about this yesterday, and it's, it, it's, it's really upsetting. It's one thing to know how central banks work, to know how fractional reserve banking works, to know how they take down countries, to have the IMF and World Bank documents that have been out for nine years since they got leaked when Sticklitz left the World Bank, a Nobel Prize winner for economics. It's one thing to know they were planning this, and I've written a book about it, I've made films about it, Obama deception, fall of the republic. It's one thing to know they're going to do it, but it's another thing to really see them do it. It's like if you go to a hanging, I guess, and it's one thing to hear a hanging's coming, but to actually watch him throw the switch and the trap door fall and, you know, that neck snap. Um, or in a more modern sense, it's one thing to know a lethal injection's coming up, but then to witness one and to watch the person get the shot and roll out and die like a dog that's been euthanized. That It's happening. They're pushing the needle in right now. They're driving the plunger in right now. And uh, republics and societies and, and, and humanity... They don't die uh, unless they die in spirit. And so, yes, they are killing the republic. They are fully overturning the Bill of Rights and Constitution at every level right now. Uh, many members of Congress admit the presidency is being turned into a bureaucratic dictatorship. Congress is being rendered ceremonial right now on war, taxes, uh, you name it. We're in the middle of a war, an info war, and it's becoming a physical war. And we need to try to fix things peacefully, but the system wants it to be violent. And as we go deeper into a depression, you're going to see more and more corrupt governments get out of control, and you're going to see more and more clashes. That's what Homeland Security has been set up for, is to suppress the American people. Now, I want to get into Fast and Furious, but first I want to get into the economic news. Again, we told you that when they bailed out Ireland, that the problems would only get worse in Ireland. Because the debt isn't theirs. It's designed to bring you deeper into indebtedness, like a loan shark. We told you there'd be a first bailout of Greece, a second, and then they want a third. They're now in the news calling for a third. They need one for Italy, Portugal. They now admit that will bankrupt the entire euro, and it's going to happen. The banksters put the politicians into power, put their people into power for this program to bankrupt the planet and on the ashes of it, introduce the global digital SDR, carbon tax, and VAT taxed grid, and that's now the solution, CNN, ABC News, Times of London, you're being told that's the answer. For two years, they've come out of the closet and said, yeah, world government's the answer, we're going to save you. Now, the conspiracy theorists were wrong that we were going to set this up, but it, we're setting up exactly what they said we'd set up. Conspiracy theorists are folks that are informed, people that know the branches of government. People that know that having the TSA grab your genitals is wrong, they now call you a conspiracy theorist because you don't like it. Having an opinion is conspiracy theory. Being able to talk is conspiracy theory. Being informed is conspiracy theory. As I've said, two plus two equals four. That is now a conspiracy theory. Uh, you're not allowed to have any thoughts. You just receive what they tell you, and that's the end of it. Uh, they're now on the news again saying mercury is good for children's brains. They don't care. Everyone knows. If you've looked at the science. It's one of the most destructive metals in the brain. They don't care. Now, euro shaken by debt crisis uh, dollar benefits, and this is how they're going to sell it. Seesaw, dollar drops, euro drops later. Euro drops, then next dollar drops. And they go up and down in the gyrations, but in the general trend, they're going down. And so we look at the short term, and oh, hooray, the dollar went up a little, but overall, it's still going down. Same thing with the euro. It's global G20, concerted currency devaluation, a giant... Inflation tax on all of us, food commodities going up, uh, food prices and uh, going up kills people in the third world. It just hurts people in the West. Uh, approaching 50 million people on food stamps in the United States. That's your modern bread lines. You imagine if every day there were 50 million people in soup kitchen lines? We're in a full bore depression. And Geithner, we played it yesterday, said this is the Great Recession. So now... Uh, they're going from, we left the recession in June of 2009, and now we have entered the, <clears throat> the greatest recession. And it, it's going to be the worst thing in, that many of us have seen in our lifetimes. That's the quote. So, so they've gone from looting you in, in, in the last few phases to now saying, yes, it's time for sacrifice. It's time for depression. But don't worry. 
cut all the benefits, raise the taxes, pay everything to the bankers that they made up out of nothing, and uh, things aren't going to be all right. It's going to get worse, but that's just the way it is. So now they're even dispensing with the lies about hope and change, and Obama's going to wave a magic pixie wand and fix everything. And with this comes stage terror attacks to make you love government. With this comes new wars. They're following a handbook. We're entering absolute bedlam. We're going to look back on July of 2011 as a happy time. You think things are bad now? You haven't seen anything yet. This is globalism. This is the wages of globalism. This is the fruits. This is what it does. Post-industrial world, serfdom, feudalism, economic bondage as a tool of control, no middle class, the poor plunging into abject poverty. Let's go ahead and play Geithner on Meet the Press, the slithering private Federal Reserve operative uh, in there engaged in trillion dollar heist in front of everyone. Here it is. When, when do you think recovery is actually going to start feeling like recovery? Oh, I think it's going to take a long time still. I get, this is a very tough economy. And mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to feel very hard, harder than anything they've experienced in a lifetime now for some time to come. And that, but that is because that is the tragic effects of a crisis this deep and this bad caused by a long period of lost, lost opportunities to do things that make the country stronger. Uh, oh, so, and, and, and earlier he said raise taxes, centralize control, because we didn't have bigger government to siphon the money off, we're in trouble. Now, this is a guy, uh, and, and his predecessor was the former head of Goldman Sachs. All these people are either Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, or they're Wells Fargo, or they're Bank of America, or Citigroup, Citibank. That's it. And you got the Bank of England over in Europe. That's six banks. Six groups. They openly created the 1.5 quadrillion, 1,500 trillion. They openly got rid of Glass-Steagall. They haven't brought it back to allow them to do this. They openly have gotten, and we haven't gotten new numbers in over a year, 27 trillion, that's Bloomberg, of American taxpayer money. It was 23.7 trillion two years ago. Now we don't even know what it is, but it's trillions a month. And they take it and then leverage it into derivatives they don't just, for every dollar they have in reserve, loan out 10 to you at interest. They loan out unlimited now. That's what getting rid of Glass-Steagall did. But notice now, they don't loan it out. They only give it to themselves to buy up media, to buy up defense, uh, to uh, buy up water districts, roads, everything going bankrupt into their coffers. And the magnitude of this is just unspeakable. Did you hear Geithner? This is going to be... For many people, the worst thing they've ever experienced in their life. They've never experienced anything like this, and it's going to go on for a long time. Yeah, it's never going to end. You're going down a tunnel that doesn't have an end. It's bottomless. you got to go back up. You don't let them lead you deeper. Remember three years ago? Oh, give the bankers trillions, they'll fix it. Oh, give Greece another bailout. They'll it's not a bailout. The words they all use are lies. The words they use are lies. Everything's a lie with these people. They engineered the entire system. They're openly saying their solution after they're done bringing us into a total prolonged depression when we're so desperate, they'll say, you know what? We're gonna tax every all human activity. You're gonna pay us to breathe. You're gonna pay us to drive a car. We're gonna track everything you do. And we're gonna have a VAT tax on everything. How does that sound? We will fix it. The, the, the people that engineered it publicly, total criminals, they will fix it with austerity while they have their yachts and airplanes. Now, and Foster, the mayor of Quartzsite, Arizona, uh, he joins us uh, now uh, about the showdown that happened. This has now gotten international attention. Uh, they have uh, told the mayor that he's fired the city council now. They, I guess they, you, don't, you don't need elections. You just fire the mayor. Well, he went and canceled their, uh, quote, illegal meeting. I guess it's not following the state laws on that. And they went ahead and had it anyway. Uh, Mayor Ed Foster of Quartzsite, thanks for joining us, sir. Tell us what happened. Well, thanks again for having me on again. Uh, and I appreciate your support and all of your listeners, but this, this situation in Arizona is just so similar to what's going on across this country. We have bureaucrats trying to run the government. They think they're in charge. They, they refuse to bow to the elected people. They, they, they are running roughshod in in, like in the case of Quartzsite, we have a town council who are puppets for these people. You know, they, they rubber stamp everything they do. 
It's just unconscionable what, what this is. And this is true in all of America right now, you know? Well, uh, morning, yes, sir, Mayor. Break down what happened. Well, what this morning, you know, first they had this illegal meeting Sunday, and, and it violated open meetings law because first, it wasn't agendized, it wasn't announced, uh, they called it, you know, on very short notice. I refused to attend it. I opened the door to town hall. I seen they were having an illegal meeting. And I said, no, I'm not coming into this meeting. It's illegal. And as I said that, the police officer who was guarding the door pulled the door closed, and you can see in the video that's online, clunk, and the door was locked. So that was the final straw. Public meetings are just that. They're open to the public. When they lock that door... There is no other justification at that point for that meeting. That meeting was illegal. The business they conducted behind that locked door is illegal. And therefore, the justification for the meeting they called this morning on short notice, I actually got notified. I didn't get notified officially. Friends of mine last night came to me around 8 p.m. and told me, my God, they scheduled a meeting for 10 o'clock. And I thought because of the emergency order, they'd cancel all meetings. In fact, it said that. But they didn't bother to tell me there'd be a meeting. And I don't think they had thought that at 10 o'clock this morning there was going to be such a media circus at their meeting. But it was. Every television station, everybody's covering it. But in front of God in the world, when I told them this meeting was illegal and walked out, they instructed the vice mayor to go ahead and bring the meeting to order, and they conducted business illegally again. Well, they think because they have, quote, the power of the office that their God... And it's classic. I mean, this is something they're definitely not going to win in the end. Mayor, uh, this has become a big international story, obviously. AP reporting on it, you name it. Where is it going from here? I mean, if if they're allowed to get away with this, will it become a imperium? What the, you know, first off, one of the things that's supporting this is this chief of police, who at this point in time, because the 80% of the court site PD have filed this letter complaining about him, alleging a criminal act. And under that circumstance, that man should be sitting home in a rocking chair waiting for an investigation. And as far as I can tell right now, my QPD officers who filed that complaint are saying that there's less than an energetic investigation going on by DPS right now. What I'm asking is that the listeners and the friends of listeners or whatever contact the governor and say it's about time this chief of police gives a thorough investigation. Well, why do you think the state police and others aren't going to want to investigate? Because they're run by chiefs that don't want to be investigated. This is the this is what happens in government. They all start not investigating each other so that they can do whatever they want, and then that allows government to get go even more wild, and then it just it starts snowballing downhill. Well, what I'm doing is using this international media storm that's out there, and and. I'm asking that we keep the pressure on to the, the responsible state authorities to make a real investigation. I swear that if this chief of police is cleared of all these charges, these officers are put against him, I will shake his hand and congratulate him. But until he is cleared of all charges, he should not be wearing a badge and a gun. He should be sitting at home until this investigation is done. That is what I went to the governor's office a month ago trying to figure out how, how to get it done. I Mayor, Mayor, can you stay with us a few more minutes on the other side? Oh, we're going to go I, back. I'm to yours until you tell me you don't. Okay, well, we'll just do a few more minutes. Going I'm going to go to, the to Mayor Ed Foster of Courtside. Uh, Mayor, uh, so where does it go from here? I mean, the, the, the mystery paychecks, can't find out where those are going, can't have investigations. I mean, did you say to them when you got there, you can't fire the mayor? I, I mean, are, are are they going to nullify other elections? Uh, what's happening? I didn't tell them any such thing. I don't acknowledge that their 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 law was illegal. That they put the town manager and the town chief of police in charge. That's an illegal law. I refuse to acknowledge that I still perform my duty as this mayor, and I am going to continue to do that. Now, if they wanted to do this, and they could, they could call a regular meeting, and they could rubber stamp the the law change because that's the way they do it. But at least it would be done as a you know, legal meeting with the citizens of court site in attendance. And I'm sure that the meeting would break down in pandemonium like it did today because the people are upset with what they're doing. The people have really woken up here in court site and they're jumping up and down at them. The and people? Not, I mean, who needs a mayor? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Mayor, who needs a mayor? Who needs...
Who needs the people, the 3,600 of the town? You got a town manager and a police chief now. In fact, well, all over the world, the globalists are trying to get rid of local elected government and go to corporate government. What's wrong with that? You know, mayor is just a title, Alex. It's just a title. What I am is a spokesperson for the people of Quartzsite. And every elected official should wake up and understand that they should do their job for the people who put them there, not for these bureaucrats, you know? These, bureau these council people have completely lost track of that. They are a rubber stamp for these Alex Taft and the Chief Gilbert person. They just don't listen to the people out in the community. Well, All we're they do, they, they have a few sink offense that hang around them and, oh, boy, yeah, you're doing the right thing. And those people... They say that until all of a sudden they do something and the police chief or the building official or the tax collector show up on their doorstep. Oh, I'm a friend, Mike. How could you do that to me? You know? So, well, they love they love being drug around by the by their pimps. Mayor, we'll continue to watch this as it develops from courtside. Thank you for spending time with us, sir. Well, thank you for putting a spotlight on these cockroaches. You bet, sir. God bless. All right. Watching. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're watching that microcosm of what's happening in the rest of the country uh, and the world. All right, let me, I, I meant to spend more time on this today because it's so big, but I'll have to cover it tomorrow because I just can't do justice to it now. Obviously, Ron Paul's announced he's not going to seek re-election for the House of Representatives. Uh, it's all or nothing. He's going to totally commit to the presidential campaign, and then whatever happens, he's either going to the White House or he's going to Texas. Job well done, Ron Paul, either way, and the campaign's just getting started, so this is his big hurrah. Governor Paul? Oh. Uh, I guess there was some talk about him running for governor, but he kind of giggled and laughed that off. Yeah, he could uh, not run, and if he lost the presidency, become Governor Paul. That'd be nice. I'd really... I would really be proud of that. And, and then he'd probably move back into the governor's mansion, not hide up in Westlake. Uh, like Pointy Boots uh, does, uh, Al Gore's former chief of staff, <clears throat> campaign manager. Because <laughs> he's so conservative, Michelle Bachman, IRS uh, tax enforcer. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't talk bad about them. They're all, Al Gore's a good guy. He likes Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney's good as well, right in Obamacare. That's the model for it. He wrote it in Massachusetts. I mean, I shouldn't be so informed. It's kind of creepy that we know what we're talking about. Okay, um, man, I, I, look, here's the problem. Most talk show hosts struggle. That's all they do is take calls and kind of hype things for one or two minutes when they come back live. And then they lean on the ropes of the callers or the guests. Not me. I go 10 hours and you know it. Uh, the problem is, is that I, I, I cover all this news and then I look at it again. And uh, it's a lot of times I see it kind of like uh, something that's already been vomited out. You know, I don't go back to it. It's very painful uh, when I think about how evil these people are. And I understand that's why some of you don't want to face it. But uh Here's a Fox News. I also have uh, Long Island Press. Uh, family of murdered Border Patrol agent considering suing feds over Fast and Furious. And they're talking about suing Holder himself and the head of the ATF shipping in tens of thousands of guns knowingly into Mexico so they can destabilize Mexico, kill the drug cartels they don't control, and um, come after the Second Amendment. And the good news is the cat's out of the bag. Uh, folks are now understanding how government operates. I mean, this, this is the tip of the iceberg. If the evidence shows Brian's death was approximately caused by the negligence of the federal government, there will be a case of action, said uh, Terry family attorney Paul Charlton. Uh, Terry was killed in December of 2010 at the hands of illegal immigrant worker uh, working for a cartel and patrolling an area near Tucson known as Rio Rico. And uh, there's two others reportedly killed by these guns, Border Patrol agents. And uh, that's how they roll. That's how they, and the ATF, even at the time when he got killed, paraded around and said, we gotta, you, know, you gotta turn your guns into us. We gotta ban your semi-autos. You know, uh, we gotta ban your deer rifles because law officers are being killed. Yeah, because yeah, you're giving them the guns, the drug dealers to kill them. And you made the drugs illegal to begin with to put all the money into it. So there would be criminals out there ready to kill because there's so many millions involved. I mean, you guys wrote the whole story. It's meant to take our freedoms and pack the prisons. And uh, let me tell you something. If I heard two talk shows this morning, without even surfing many channels, talking about how the government's criminal and staged this to get our guns, one of them kind of a cupcake 
liberal, one guy's liberal, one's conservative talk show host, and both of them were agreeing this was staged to get our guns well, because it's admitted, and they're calling for criminal indictments against the, 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 the scumbags in government. What else are you supposed to do? And so there you have it. Oh, oh they'd ship 30,000 guns down there, but they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't stage a Gulf of Tonkin. Oh, they admit they staged a Gulf of Tonkin to get us into Vietnam. And, and all the other things they've staged, all the other things they do. You know, during the break, I saw Obama at a medal ceremony giving troops medals. And he does this all the time. You see the solemn warriors, the primitive psychology of our tribesmen, the protector of the tribe, the people that keep us from being taken slaves by the neighboring tribe. You have this instinctive love of the, uh, of the warriors. And there's Obama always with them, you know, soaking up their, their gleam into himself. I mean, it's, it's all just scripted trash. And there he is continuing and accelerating the stealing of the death benefits of the troops on record. And Bush was involved, Clinton was involved. They don't care. In fact, they like hurting you. See, sociopaths and then psychopaths and um, sadomasochistic psychopaths, they enjoy their work. They in, that's why they want power, so they can enjoy their work and not get in trouble. And it's a process in tyranny of them recruiting folks that have a like-minded dalliance. And that's what tyranny is. That's why it's so horrible and why it gets worse and worse and worse. And then none of them can ever allow prosecutions of any of the other criminals because it sets a bad precedent where they might get in trouble. And so they say, hey, it's wide open. Rob everybody. And then people in Russia and third world countries and every other case in history in more primitive times stops producing. People stop caring. They become lazy. You get passive aggressive societies of just kind of jellyfish people. When there's real freedom and you've got a chance to work and keep what you produce and to be honored by it and truth is honored and, 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 and people don't put up with corruption. I mean, folks, 150 years ago, if you smarted off to somebody, they weren't just going to get in a fist fight with you, even if you were a lot bigger than them. It wasn't even an honor issue. That's what they did. You were going to be in a fist fight. And if you wanted satisfaction, you'd go out in the street with guns and, and, and walk 20 paces and shoot each other. Think, and that's so alien, so so caveman to us now. That's what you have to be like. People were very polite. There's a reason Southerners are on average known for being so polite, because it was the last place that duels and all that were phased out, kind of stylized by the guys in the, you know, in the town square in the 1870s or whatever out west before they started outlawing duels. But the point is there was real freedom. And so that's why, that that, that is the American culture. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, there's a reason mafia always preys on people, on minority groups that, quote, come from third world countries where they've been accustomed to corruption. Because in, in, in even modern times, I mean, I'll guarantee you if, you, if you pulled up to the average ranch and got out and, and you were the mafia, whatever group you were, sort of threatening a rancher, they would just kill you. And they don't care if you send more hitmen later. Fine, they're going to die. They would just kill you. They would kill you. And that's why we have freedom. Because, oh, you're... Trying to enslave me, I'm going to kill you. But we've been trained that when government mafia comes or, or, or Bank of America comes to take the house that they don't even have a deed for and you're not even behind in payments or you own it outright, well, the cops do what the banker says and the, what the corrupt court says and you go out and let the mafia take you over. But they've done the psychological actuaries and they know that you're going to start resisting. They know those old impulses of freedom are going to emerge, that the veneer of civilization is burning off like a thin layer of paint down to the stainless steel beneath it. And that machine of human dynamic freedom that refuses to submit to tyranny, liberty or death. What does that mean? What does liberty or death mean? It means I will not live as a slave. It means I'm coming on straight on. I'm not backing off. You want to play chicken? Fine. Liberty or death. I don't care. Don't turn off the road. I'm going all the way into you. Liberty or death. Liberty or death. Liberty. Liberty or death. Freedom or death. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm not stopping. I'm not backing off. I'm committed. There's no debate. There's no discussion. It's over. Liberty or death. As for you, I know not what choice others may make, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. And these were people going up against the greatest empire the world had ever seen. 
that, that, that huge giant continental armies couldn't defeat in a seven-year war where they had to bring mercenaries over. And they lost almost every battle, but they didn't give up. They wore out the enemy. They said liberty or death. They committed. They com It's a good feeling. It's an empowering feeling. It's what life's all about. It's about committing, committing. It's about saying, all my chips are in. My cards are on the table. I'm done. I recognize what you are. We don't want to have to physically fight these people. We're winning in the info war. But we need all of you to really get fired up and really get aggressive in the info war. We can beat these people together, ladies and gentlemen. I got some other news I got ahead, and then we'll get to your call. This is a prehistoric spearhead I uh, found out uh, by the lake. And, you know, why did humans have this? Well, to protect themselves, to hunt. But the, there were always other tribes and different groups, even of the same genetic uh, sequencing, you know, same, quote, uh, race, uh, same human variety, would have certain styles. Some were known as being evil, some as brutal, some as warlike, uh, some as peaceful. It's, it, it's however those subcultures developed. But all of them would defend their families or they would be enslaved. And generally the men in every culture would be killed and the boys, girls, and women hauled off to make that tribe bigger. And we need to recognize the eternal struggle between liberty and corruption, freedom and slavery. It's really that simple. And I just want to encourage everybody to realize, as I've said over and over again, what a huge crossroads we're at. I mean, I look at all of this news that I've got today, and it's just all so transparent. This is why they want you, this is why the banksters want to take part of your paycheck and then pay part of it back to you later. They want you dependent. Or they even want to steal your private pension funds. They want you dependent. That's the name of the game. Obama says he cannot guarantee Social Security checks will go out August 3rd. This is out of... Uh, CBS News, and this is a type of uh, fear-mongering he's engaged in. He's saying, you will, and of course, they know full well the Federal Reserve could continue just to issue all of this, but it's about controlling the economy. It's about training us to cut back on the economy, to raise taxes, and to pay more to the banksters. And it's just so incredibly transparent. And we're going into a depression and they're hyperinflating the currency, they're down that road. So it won't matter if you get your social security check, it's not gonna buy what you need. And so more people will go on welfare. More people will go on food stamps, not just the 50 million now. And now Geithner admits we're in a depression. He calls it the greatest or the great recession and that it's gonna be the worst thing in our lives that we've ever experienced. And they're going to give you new solutions that they claim will fix it. And then it's going to get even worse. And then they'll say, don't worry, I got more solutions. You give us more power. You let us spy on you and take all your rights and get rid of juries and stick our hands down in your pants and put you in microwave ovens and force inoculations on you and Al-Qaeda won't get you. You know, I want to go to your phone calls. And uh, I did a little bit better job today getting to some of them. Um, I'm going to just, the main radio show ends in a minute and a half. I'll do five minutes internet only to try to cram in a few more. But Rick in Arizona, take us out of the main line radio broadcast today. Go ahead. Yeah, Alex, uh, I think I have the answer to uh, Mayor Foster's, uh, the question you asked him about uh, why do you think uh, the authorities in Arizona aren't uh, helping him out. And it has something to do with the location that uh, Jennifer Jones spoke about a couple of days ago. There is a person in this state that has dictatorship powers, and it is the governor, Jan Brewer, who, remember, is on the council of 10 mayors. And I'll let you take it from there. God bless your family and be safe, Alex. Thank you so much. Yeah, they're replacing the original governments that are accountable to the people through the state constitutions and federal constitution with council, rural council, council of governors, council of mayors, 10, uh, you know, nine ring wraiths and... Sauron, one ring to rule them all, and in the darkness bind them. And you got 10 FEMA regions. <laughs> I've got a 1937 New York Times article somewhere around here. The actual copy, Bernadine Smith sent it to me years ago, where they show the 10 regions. That was 30, 40 years before they even set them up.